there we go. See, this is a rare joy. It's rare once you become an adult that anyone actually reads a book to you, let alone like a picture book. So, once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in a marzipan castle. She lived there all alone. Except for Mr. Whiffle, who didn't count because he was only a teddy bear and the thing under the bed. Mr. Whiffle was the princess's best friend. They spent all their time together and had many fabulous adventures. They found buried treasure by the old stump. They defeated the Black Duke's rebellion at the Battle of Bainbridge. Victory came at a great price. The princess was sore wounded and Sir Whiffle was forced to take terrible revenge. They fought Greenbeard the pirate and defeated him. Though in the heat of battle, Mr. Whiffle was nearly drowned and only saved due to the princess's quick thinking. But when her daytime adventures were over, the princess always returned to her marzipan castle. After she had dinner and washed her face, she and Mr. Whiffle went to bed. But they were not alone. The princess had never seen the thing under the bed because it didn't like the lights. During the daytime when the bright sun was out, it hid in the deep shadows under the bed. It even hid at night when the lamps were lit. That's why the princess always kept a candle burning. But some nights, when it was stormy out, there were drafts in her room. And then the thing didn't need to hide anymore. The princess had never seen the thing, but she knew what it was like. It had great wide eyes that could see in the dark and a great wide mouth for tasting things. It had thin flat lips and a wide flat tongue. Its skin was greenish grayish brownish. The princess thought that it was prickly like a nettle or scaly like a fish or slimy like a frog, but it was actually soft like velvet, so the thing never made any noise at all when it moved. The princess knew that it had great big hands with great long fingers, and its long, long arm had an extra elbow, so it could reach out from under the bed, reach up, then bend to reach the top of the bed. And tickle the princess silly. <laughs> One day, a package arrived for the princess. <clears throat> the princess loved the kitten. She and Mr. Whiffle spent a long time trying to decide what his name should be. The princess wanted to call him Mr. Mutton Chop because of how he smelled. Mr. Whiffle wanted to call him Moloch because of his pointy, pointy claws. <laughs> they compromised by calling him M.M. or Emmy for short. But then Emmy got lost. He wasn't in their treasure mine or in the old cave. Mr. Whiffle suggested they look in the river, but Emmy wasn't there either. They knew he couldn't get over the wall or past the gate. They looked everywhere, but they still hadn't found Emmy by dinner time. Oh. That night, the princess couldn't sleep. Thinking about her lost kitten made her tummy hurt. Even worse, her candle was short, and the night was long, and her tummy hurt. Yeah. 
Then the princess heard a noise from under the bed. She knew it couldn't be the thing because it never made any noise except sometimes a soft velvety rustle. The noise sounded familiar to the princess. It was the sound an animal would make if it wanted to cry out, but it was muffled and quiet. Then the noise stopped and the princess heard a soft velvety sound, like something was reaching and bending, reaching and bending. Then something wet and warm fell onto her face. Drip, drip, drip. Then Mother Moon came out from behind a cloud and the princess saw what the thing was holding. <laughs> it was a big piece of marzipan. It was sticky and drippy because the thing had been eating it. He wanted to share and be friends. He was already friends with Emmy. They had been playing under the bed all day. <laughs> Emmy had been trying to call to the princess, but she couldn't. She'd been eating marzipan with the thing, and her little kitten mouth was all gummed up. When she tried to mew, it came out more. But now that they were together again, and now that the princess had met the thing, she wasn't scared anymore. And so the princess ate them. And there was nothing left but sticky bones. So she and Mr. Wiffle made a fort out of them. <laughs> and had tea. So. Now briefly, because somebody was giving me real dark looks from the audience here, um, please be aware, especially for the folks right, who have never read any of my stuff, please don't think that I would do anything as cheap as write something with a twist ending because narratively that's some bullshit behavior. <laughs> this is a story that if you're not paying attention in the right way, you just probably don't understand. Because once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in a marzipan castle. And she lived there all alone. <laughs> you know, and it might be fair for you <laughs> to make certain mistakes because there are tropes in here. There are props that support the fact that this is a children's book. Um, you know, there's pictures, there's a few words, there's a princess, she has a teddy bear. We have like a description, a minute description of physical characteristics like, oh, what big eyes you have. But, But at a certain point, like, it's not my fault if you aren't paying attention. Like, when, back when I used to be invited to speak at high schools, um, I got to this point in here, and I heard somebody in the back of the room go, there's an awful lot of bones in this book. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, and I'm filled with joy. I felt like joy in my heart. And I'm like, oh, we're not fucked in the future. Like, this child, please, ch you're like, go, go into politics, child. Please save us from ourselves. You can see, you can tell a hawk from a handsaw 
you know that something is not right in this story because at some point you really have to be willfully ignoring the things that are in here. Can you see the heads on pikes way down by the bridge? They still hadn't found Emmy by dinner time. Oh, there's the second wave. I always wait for the second wave because everyone's over. Like, oh. Thinking about her lost kitten made her tummy hurt. Okay, there's another group of people who just joined the rest of us. This is not a pet. This has never been a pet. Um, so yeah, there's a lot else going on here. I'm not going to show you everything. But uh, yeah, this is just a different story that you were maybe... I love this page. I could not love this page more. Um... If I had more time, I would read you the second one where she gets, where she gets a little brother. Um, oh, yes, it is everything you imagine. Um, now, I will say,